Climate change is the gradual rise in Earth's average surface temperature. Starting in the middle of the 20th century, scientists started to notice that Earth's climate was changing faster than it ever had before. The simple answer is maybe. Although the change in Earth's temperature could be natural, it's happened before to a lesser extent in the Middle Ages, which was called the Medieval Warm Period. Scientists think that it could be our fault. Basically, Earth is insulated by a whole bunch of gases that surround our planet and form our atmosphere. These gases, called greenhouse gases, essentially let sunlight reach Earth, but keep heat from leaving, so they keep us warm. This is called the greenhouse effect. The problem is, in the last couple of centuries, we've been burning fossil fuels like gasoline. When we burn gas like you might in a car, the emissions go up into the atmosphere and become a part of Earth's insulation. Now, think about how much there might be when you take account, into account every car, factory, or power plant in the world. The emissions that we put out contribute to an insulation layer that's getting much too big. Therefore, Earth is getting warmer and warmer. 2014 was the warmest year on record, and all 10 of the hottest years in history have happened during our lifetimes. The biggest one is carbon dioxide, but there are lots of others, like methane and nitrous oxide. Carbon dioxide made up 82% of all human-caused gases in 2012, and it stays in our atmosphere for thousands of years. One specific type of greenhouse gas is chlorofluorocarbons. These were used as refrigerants and aerosol propellants until, by international agreement, they were banned. Let's focus a little more on carbon dioxide. Thanks to Mr. Clifton, you know that plants take in CO2 and we breathe it out. Because of deforestation, we don't have enough trees to take in all the CO2 that we need them to. Also, we're producing so much CO2 that we would still need to reduce our emissions even if we had enough trees. CO2 comes from natural processes like breathing, and also burning fossil fuels like gas, oil, and coal. Weird as it may seem, Earth has to stay within a very specific temperature to run smoothly. Once the Earth gets warmer, ice around the North and South Poles start to melt. This causes the sea level to rise, eventually swamping seaside towns. Just this year, the world saw its first refugees from climate change. The Carteret Islands of Papua New Guinea are completely underwater, and their entire community of 2,000 people was forced to immigrate. Surprisingly, only a few newspapers covered the event, and one reporter was there to witness the world's first climate change refugees. Also, when the glaciers melt, more salt water will become a threat to our fresh drinking water. Coral requires a very specific temperature to stay healthy. Because the oceans are getting warmer, the tiny animals that live on and take care of coral, zooxanthellae, are leaving the coral in mass numbers, which kills both themselves and the coral. Because zooxanthellae give coral their color, and when they leave, the coral turns white, this is known as coral bleaching. An estimated 19% of the world's coral reefs have been killed off as of February 2015. According to the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network, if emission trends continue, coral may very well be extinct within 40 years. Fish and other underwater aquatic organisms depend on coral for shelter and food. If coral goes extinct, entire underwater ecosystems will die. In the past few years, the number of natural disasters like wildfires and hurricanes is on the rise due to climate change and will only increase in the coming years. If we continue to do nothing, by the time we die, about 2100, the world will have experienced a dramatic increase in wildfires, mass extinction of species, widespread coral and fish mortality, and our water supplies will be threatened. Our country has made numerous efforts to reduce our carbon footprint. 1970 marked the implementation of two policies, the Clean Air Act, which established limits on the emissions for industrial and mobile sources, and the National Environmental Policy Act, which ensures that all parts of the government take the environment into consideration when they're making decisions. In 1997, Many countries, including ours, met in Japan to formally discuss climate change and come up with a plan to combat it. This was called the Kyoto Protocol. Most recently, our government created a climate change action plan in 2013, which highlighted increased renewable energy usage and more rigorous fuel consumption standards for heavy-duty vehicles. Scientists are also working on creating a miracle plant to help solve climate change. They're looking at different types of algae and genetically engineering them to, cons to consume enormous amounts of CO2. Although they haven't succeeded yet, 
it's possible that projects like these could help minimize damages. Climate change is the huge issue that will continue to affect all of us for the rest of our lives. It's important that we work on lowering our individual carbon footprints as well. Just a few simple steps, like turning off the lights in your room when you're at school, can make a difference.